Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning into our video. In this video, we will look at a demo model demonstrating a single phase PV inverter with a cascaded control scheme. This model provides an explanation of the typical workflow of the Plex embedded code generation tool using Texas Instruments or TI C2000 microcontrollers, also referred to as MCUs. Combined with the Plex RT box, the performance of the MCU can be verified directly. Additionally, this model illustrates the multitasking code for the TIC2000 microcontrollers. There are two parts to this video. In the first part, we will look at the explanation of the model. And in the second part, we will look at the real-time performance of the model, as well as illustrate the multitasking feature. The link to the second part of the video is given in the description below. Let's open the demo model titled Single Phase PV Inverter from the TIC2000 target support demos. The demo model includes a description of the power circuit or plant and its control system model. Brief descriptions on how to configure the TIC2000 target library components and real time simulation instructions are provided as well. This demo model uses the Plex RT box to perform hardware in the loop testing of the generated embedded code. Here is the hardware setup. The plant model, in this case a single phase PV inverter, is emulated on the Plex RT box. The RT box is connected to the host computer via an Ethernet cable. The front of the box contains the interface connections for analog and digital signals. This red board is a Texas Instruments launchpad and the green board has been developed by Plexim and is an interface or breakout board used to route the signals from the controller hardware to the box. Let's open the model. The model includes a plant subsystem and a controller subsystem. Notice that each subsystem has been enabled for code generation as indicated by the thick outer border of the subsystem blocks from the execution settings dialog box. Therefore, each of these subsystems can be deployed to a separate real-time target. Let's look at the plant model. The plant subsystem has been configured to run on the RT box. Therefore, this uses the RT box target library components. The PV string model here is based on a nonlinear current source that accurately models the IV characteristics with variable inputs of sun intensity output voltage and temperature using a 3D lookup table. This current surface data is saved in a .mat file. The array is a lumped model made up of 22 PV modules connected in each string with two strings connected in parallel. The sun insulation value for the PV array is toggled between a nominal value of 1 kilowatt hour per meter square and a reduced insulation level of 0.7 kilowatt hour per meter square every two seconds to model a planned disturbance and test our control algorithm. The steady state output of the solar array is approximately 380 volts DC. This is connected to a 230 volt RMS 50 hertz single phase grid via a full bridge inverter implemented using the full bridge power module component and an LCL output filter. The PWM capture block here captures the PWM signals from the MCU. The DC input and the AC output voltage and current measurements are connected to analog out blocks which are then sensed by the MCU. Since the ADCs on the MCU can only accept values between 0 to 3.3 volts, the analog outputs are scaled and offset to be within that range. By the way, the values for all the variables in the model are provided in the initialization commands window of the simulation menu. The controller subsystem is configured to be executed on a C2000 MCU. Therefore, it uses the ADC and PWM targets of the TIC2000 target library. In order to enable or disable PWM signals during runtime, a DIP switch on the RT box launchpad interface board is used. 
the input signal to this tip switch is then routed as the input of the power stage protection block on the controller subsystem through the RTBOX launchpad interface board. The power stage protection block implements an interlock, which is a safety mechanism to enable or disable all the PWM outputs on the target MCU. The PWM outputs are disabled unless there is a logical low to high transition on the input signal. This prevents the PWM signals from becoming active as soon as the code is executed on the target, thereby ensuring safe operation. The controller subsystem has three control loops. The outer control loop is a MPP controller that ensures maximum power is extracted from the PV string for a given insulation level. To do this, it calculates the optimal PV terminal voltage using an MPP algorithm known as DP over DV or incremental conductance control implemented using a C script block. The voltage control loop based on a type 2 controller regulates the PV voltage to this optimal level by controlling the amount of current that is injected into the grid. The innermost control loop, the current controller, sets the modulation index of the inverter such that the desired current is injected into the grid. The current controller is based on a proportional resonant controller with a resonant frequency of 50 Hz to ensure no tracking error is present. Finally, a unipolar modulation scheme is deployed with two 12.5 kHz PWM generators which are phase shifted 180 degrees relative to each other. This results in the cancellation of the harmonic component at the switching frequency in the converter output. The gate signals are generated by the PWM component. The PWM component has fields such as carrier type, carrier frequency, and blanking time, as opposed to handwritten code where the peripherals are configured at the register level. A complementary PWM pair will be generated on the chosen PWM channels. The measurements of the DC input and the AC output voltages and currents are introduced to the model environment from the ADC block. The PWM block is configured to generate interrupts to trigger the ADC start of conversion and the control task trigger. Control task trigger specifies the base sample time and trigger for the main control task. Interrupts are synchronized with the PWM carrier and will occur at the underflow and overflow events. Underflow and overflow events correspond to PWM carrier reaching the respective carrier minimum or carrier maximum values. This means that the control task is triggered twice per PWM period. The Plex coder and the TIC2000 target support package allow the user to generate multitasking code for the TIC2000 family of MCUs. Multitasking code unlocks processing power for controls regulating multiple system outputs with dynamics on a range of time scales. Let's look at the real-time performance in the multitasking feature in part two of the video. This concludes the first part of the video. Thank you for watching.